rape, cannibalism, child molestation, and necrophilia. Committing just one of these acts will immediately get you labeled as a psychopath. Well, one teenager decided to do it all. Jeffrey Dahmer, or the Milwaukee Cannibal, was born on May 21, 1960, and is the most insane psychopath to ever live in the United States of America. He grew up with both of his parents. However, he acted like your typical neglected child. In school, he was very shy and quiet, but he had his small circle of friends. From an early age, he showed interest in animals. Well, dead animals. He used to collect their corpses, bring them home, dissect them, and store their parts in glass jars. One time, he even impaled a dog's head on a pole by his house, just because he felt like it. In high school, he became more of an outcast, although some of his former classmates describe him as your typical class clown. He was known for pulling strange and disturbing pranks, such as faking seizures and knocking over objects in school. During this time, his personal problems escalated, and he became addicted to alcohol. He would drink in class every day, saying it was his medicine. As if his life wasn't hard enough, he also discovered that he was gay, but he decided to keep this a secret since people weren't very accepting of this in the late 70s. When he turned 18, his parents got divorced. At this age, he also graduated high school. And while most people like to celebrate their high school graduation by partying and drinking, Jeffrey decided to celebrate by going out and committing his first murder. His victim was 18-year-old hitchhiker Stephen Hicks. Jeffrey invited him to his house, saying they could have a drink together. But things quickly escalated. Jeffrey thought it would be fun to hit Stephen in the head with a dumbbell, killing him. As soon as Stephen was dead, Jeffrey took off his own clothes and masturbated above the corpse. The next day, he dissected Stephen's body and buried his remains. A few weeks later, Jeffrey decided it would be smart to dig out Stephen's corpse, dissolve his flesh in acid, flush it down the toilet, smash up his bones, and scatter the dust from the smashed up bones in a nearby forest. Now, you may be asking, what made Jeffrey decide to kill Stephen and desecrate his corpse in such a horrendous and disturbing way? Well, Stephen was getting tired and Jeffrey just didn't want him to leave. So next time you're at a friend's house and he tries to convince you to stay over for a bit longer, do not leave, or you may never be allowed to. In 1979, Jeffrey enrolled in the U.S. military as a medic. Wouldn't you love to have this man operate on you next time you need medical attention? One soldier claims that Jeffrey raped him constantly over a period of 17 months. The victim reported this to his commander, but the commander didn't believe him. Jeffrey later ended up being discharged from the military and moved back in with his father. His alcohol addiction didn't stop, and his father couldn't handle him, so he sent him to his grandmother, the only person in the world that Jeffrey liked. At first, things were going great. He was very obedient and found a job. But then, things took a turn. He got laid off, remained unemployed, and was arrested for exposing himself to a group of 25 women and children, some as young as nine years old. After two years of unemployment, he found a job where a random stranger offered him a blow job. He declined the offer, but it got him thinking. He started to experiment with his sexuality more and became a regular in different gay bars. During this time, he enjoyed a lot of sex. But one thing annoyed him. His partners kept moving away. That's why he eventually started drugging them. But this got him banned from his favorite bar. In 1986, he was arrested for masturbating in front of two 12-year-old boys. But he said that he was just peeing and had no clue that there were people in front of him. Yes, great excuse. In his late twenties, he decided it would be fun to start killing more and more people. 
His first murder since the incident with Stephen Hicks was actually kind of an accident. He invited 25-year-old Stephen Tromey to a hotel where he wanted to have sex with him, but he ended up waking up to Stephen's dead body without remembering anything from the previous night. After this incident, Jeffrey stopped caring and simply went on a murder spree. In total, he killed 15 more victims, many of whom he also raped and ate. On July 22, 1991, Jeffrey offered three men $100 each to do some nude modeling. One of them, 32-year-old Tracy Edwards, agreed. The two of them went to Jeffrey's apartment. As Edwards entered the apartment, Jeffrey handcuffed him. Jeffrey then pulled out a knife and told Edwards that he was planning on eating his heart. But Tracy outsmarted him. He ended up escaping and running into two police officers. He explained what happened and took them to Jeffrey's apartment. It didn't take long before the officers found pictures of severed body parts and eventually real body parts that were stored in the fridge. He was arrested, sent to court, and pled guilty to 15 counts of murder. If only he had bought some stronger handcuffs, he may never have been caught. On July 28, 1994, Jeffrey Dahmer was attacked by fellow inmate Christopher Scarver. Christopher attacked Jeffrey with a metal bar, killing him. He said that God allegedly told him to do it. Christopher was sentenced to a life sentence for the kill, but this didn't really matter, as he was serving one already. Christopher ended up becoming a folk hero, because thanks to him, there's one less psychopath roaming the world. But don't worry, there's plenty more of them. There might even be one watching you right now.